Hi guys, welcome back to a case of econ struggles. Today we're talking about the social planner problem. We're gonna set it up, take first order conditions and talk about what they mean. Timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's go ahead and get right into it. The setup for the social planner problem is that we are trying to find Pareto optimal allocations. We talked about Pareto optimality in the last video. We also talked about that Pareto optimality is as if you give all the resources to a social planner. The social planner is going to redistribute those resources to make everyone as well off as he can. So in this scenario, we're going to have Dave be our social planner. Dave is trying to find Pareto optimal allocations subject to the feasibility constraint. So you can think of it as if Bill is trying to maximize total utility or group utility amongst all the people that are in this problem. In order to make this a little more concrete, we're going to use the Aero de Brew equilibrium, except Dave is now the social planner. So we're going to introduce Chuckles. He's going to be the second person in this problem. We're going to use the Aero de Brew setup where Bill is getting zero coconuts if the period is on and one coconut if the period is even and Chuggles is the opposite. He's getting one coconut if the period is odd and zero if the period is even. Let's talk about the objective function that Dave is trying to solve when he's thinking about Pareto optimal allocations to solve his own social planner problem. This looks very similar to the Aero de Brew problem setup, except now we have this alpha and one minus alpha. You can think of this alpha parameter as how much Dave likes Bill and Chuck. So this alpha is going to go from zero to one. If this alpha was one, then one minus alpha would be zero and then Dave would only care about Bill. If this alpha was zero, then this would be one and Dave would only care about Chuckles. And if this was a half, then this would also be a half and Dave would care about both of the utilities equally. So that's all we're doing is beta t and then this is just his utility. We're going from t equals zero to infinity. We get to choose how much Bill and Chuck consume in each period from t equals zero to infinity. Feasibility constraint, all we need to do is make sure that the number of coconuts that fall from both of their trees is greater than or equal to the amount of coconuts that Dave gives out and we can divide coconuts as small as we want. Let's go ahead and jump straight into some first order conditions. So here's the Lagrangian. I've added in this constraint with the lambda t because we have one constraint for each period in terms of feasibility. We're going to take first order conditions exactly like we've done many times before. So here's the first order condition with respect to Bill in period t. Here is the first order condition with respect to Chuckles in period t. And we're just going to set both of those equal to lambda t and simplify. So here's the simplification. I'm just going to cancel some betas. They don't need to be in here. And we're left with alpha over one minus alpha is the ratio of the marginal utilities. Now, just to make it more concrete, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this utility of consumption for both of them into just the natural log of their consumption, which means that their marginal utility is just going to be one over CTI. So I can just flip these and I get to alpha over one minus alpha is CTB over CTC. C. I'm going to plug that back into the feasibility constraint. So that's all I'm doing here. So I solve for, I don't know, Bill's consumption in period T in terms of Chuck's consumption in period T. I'm going to write that into the budget constraint. I'm going to do some algebra. And once I do that, I'm going to get that one, which is the total endowment in any given period is just Chuckle's consumption in period T over one minus alpha. I'll rearrange that and I'll get CTC. And through that, I'll get CTB. Notice that what I've done is I've just said, well, okay, the endowment is constant every period. So in every period, what's going to happen is Chuckles is just going to get the portion of the endowment. So the endowment multiplied by how much Dave cares about Chuckles, which makes sense because Dave is just going to allocate these coconuts to Bill and Chuckles based on how much he likes each of them. So if he likes Chuckles more, he's going to give Chuckles more coconuts in every period and Bill less. If he likes Bill more, he's going to give Chuckles less coconuts in every period and Bill more coconuts in every period. And again, that is represented by this alpha parameter. I'd like to point out again, Again, here that we don't have any prices anywhere in this problem. They weren't in the setup. They weren't in the solution. When you're solving a social planner problem, you should not have any prices at all. If you find yourself trying to find Pareto optimal allocations and prices are cropping up into your problem, you are doing something incorrect. The biggest difference between solving a social planner problem and something like an ADE is the lack of prices in the social planner problem. Hopefully this helps you better understand the social planner problem, how to set it up and how to solve it and what those first order conditions mean. If this was helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggle.